Raheem Sterling needs to make his mind up and he needs to make it up soon. Raheem Sterling, it is up in the air as to where his long-term future lies. Now, he is someone, Raheem Sterling, just to preface this conversation, who has showed interest uh, in recent years in the idea of playing abroad at some point in his career. He has made it clear a couple of times that he doesn't want to stay in England for his whole life. And coming into the last year of his contract, similar to Pep Guardiola, the, the video we did on Monday night, he's coming to his last year. So naturally, the questions are arising. Is he going to extend? Does he want to leave? What do City value him at? And we have what we believe is the, the official information on this anyway. There's a number of sources talking about this this topic. So we're going to give you a few tweets. As always, get involved down below in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on all these pieces of information and how you feel about the idea of Raheem Sterling extending or staying. So the first tweet we want to put in is from Simon Mullock at The Mirror. Uh, Simon Mullock is someone that I do rate uh, as a journalist. And as always, you guys can tell us down below how reliable you think any sources are. But he's someone I, I do rate fairly high. He says Raheem Sterling is weighing up whether to run down his Man City contract so he can have his pick of clubs next summer. Now, that is not what we want to hear, is it, Joe? We never want to hear as fans that one of the top players of the club is deciding or he's he's un, he's being indecisive about whether he wants to sign or or an extension or leave because listen you only have to look at Raheem Sterling's numbers and realize how important of a player he is how many trophies he's won the the experience he has and what he brings to the dressing room as a whole now i will i will concede the fact that he has not been as consistent as you would like in recent years, Raheem Sterling, or at least in the last two seasons. But I think we were all really getting excited to see Raheem Sterling next season because we now have two strikers coming in, in Alvarez and Haaland. And we know from experience, particularly when Sterling was involved in that dynamic trio uh, of Aguero, Sane and Sterling, he was really good because he had that prolific striker playing off his shoulder. And we, we all kind of felt anyway, or we still do feel that if he is to stay, that Haaland and Alvarez can, can bring Sterling back to that level. So if this is true, it's disappointing to hear that Sterling is weighing up whether to run down his contract. It's not, it's not a nice thing to hear. And then to follow on from that, Simon Mullock says, Man City officials would prefer to cash in on Raheem Sterling this summer rather than to lose him for nothing. But the final decision rests with Sterling and with the World Cup on the horizon, he may opt to, to stay put. That would make sense to me as well, I think. With the World Cup on the horizon, Sterling may not want... Uh, a change of life. He may not want to move to a different country, new language. He, he doesn't want to unsettle himself with one of the biggest stages for, in, in his career coming up very soon. Joe, before we talk a little bit more about this, how do you feel about this particular the first tweet I spoke about? He's weighing up whether to run down his contract. That's never a really nice thing to hear. I am... Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm absolutely devastated, to be honest. I never thought it would come to this of him deciding that he was going to essentially go, I am... Um, not going to sign a new contract but i'm not going to leave just yet i'm going to you know get a big big sum of cash in the summer when i'm you know a free agent because that's what happens when there's no transfer fee involved the bonuses are higher the wages are higher that's just how it is and again it's it's business sense sensible business from him but at the same time it leaves us in a sticky situation a situation that we don't want to be in i Still, I hated and still hate Sane for the way he left him doing the same thing, deciding I'm not going to sign a new contract. I want to leave. If you don't sell me, I'm just going to run it down and leave on a free, forcing our hand to sell him for a cut price. I hated him for it, and I still hate him for it. Sterling, for me, it'll be no different if he decides to go that route of deciding I'm going to run down my contract. I'm going to force your hand to get rid of me now for a cut price because I don't really want, I don't know whether I want to stay, then I'm not a fan of it. I hate it. And to be honest, after all that he's done, it kind of put, put it in a sour note, really. I don't, I don't really know what to say. I'm, I'm desperate for him to stay because like you said before, when he's had that prolific goal scorer next to him, he's been so good. And as soon as he lost that prolific goal scorer, he's, his form decided to flip over. You know, we know how he is in front of goal. Um, He's not the best at putting it in the back of the net. We've seen in recent years when, you know, we haven't had that goal scorer that he's had to step up into that role and he hasn't really suited it. So I think next season he could just return to those heights where the pressure's off. He knows he doesn't have to be that goal scorer. He knows that he's going to have to be more of a creative source and he's going to be played on that right-hand side as well. Um, 
which again, we saw what happened when he came on, on against Aston Villa. He changed the game. He's direct. He's quick. He's not afraid to take his man on. He's not afraid to cut it across the box. He's not afraid to try things. And that is something that is one of those players that we're really going to, it's going to turn around. And if he does decide to leave and we don't have that impact that he brings, we're going to look at, you know, we're not really going to realise how big of an impact he actually had, regardless of his form. We're not going to realise how big of an impact he actually had until he leaves. Because again, like you said, he's 28. He said previously that he wants to try moving abroad at some stage. If he signs a new deal, we're all, we're a bit tied there. Because if he still wants to go abroad, you're thinking it might not be more than a two, maybe three year deal until he's sort of like 30, 31. Because if he still wants to move abroad, then he's not going to wait until he's mid 30s when he's maybe in a downward spiral uh you're thinking it's it for him he might be thinking it's now or never for abroad so that might be playing on his mind as well i hope he stays but i we shouldn't be held to ransom if he's going to run his if he's going to attempt to run his contract down just get rid of him just get rid of him listen i'm a big fan of raheem sterling and there's plenty of video evidence to to prove that i backed him even when he was going through his particularly low points of city so i don't want to see him to le- see him leave and i am particularly excited at the prospect of him playing with strikers running off his shoulder and that kind of thing and him like you said it, it'll alleviate him from so, from some of the pressures of, of having to score goals and he, he isn't you know recognized as the person who needs to step up and score. I think that possibly frustrated Sterling. And he, he didn't, it didn't sit right with him, that pressure of having to score goals. But in terms of how these negotiations and these, these talks might go about his future, there's something massive to bear in mind here. This time last year, Raheem Sterling did the exact same thing Kevin De Bruyne did. He sacked his agent. So as it stands, unless news came out that I missed or, or it hasn't been reported on, Raheem Sterling is currently agentless. So he is, I, I assume, running all his own negotiations. Now, obviously, he'll have a lawyer of some sort with him, but he doesn't actually have an official agent. And I think he did that at the time because he was convinced himself at the time he was going to you know, commit his long-term future to the club. But obviously through... Uh, not getting the game time he would have liked and, and possible poor performances. Uh, he, that I think that may have changed and he may bring in an agent yet, but I don't know. I think I think it's an interesting one and I'd be disappointed to see him go. Uh, Joe, what do you think about that agent thing? But before, actually, before you talk about that, there is another piece of information here from Sam Mullock that Man City supposedly value Sterling at 60 million. Uh, how would you feel at the prospect of selling Sterling for 60 million? And would anybody pay 60 million for Sterling with one year left on his contract? That's that's the sticky situation that we're in where we paid fifty million pounds for him a few years ago from Liverpool. Sixty million for me, I would take for a player in his last year of his contract, his homegrown, so you had a bit more tax onto that, of course, and he's in what would be considered his prime. Um but that is the big question, which club is gonna pay sixty million and which club at a level where he wants to play at. He wants to play Champions League football, regular, competing for titles, competing for trophies. Uh, which club of that stature is going to pay £60 million for him? I don't know where he fits in. He, he's not going to go to a Real Madrid. They've got far too much cover. They've obviously just come off of losing out on the Mbappe situation. So, obviously, there's a spot open up there, but obviously with Salah's contract as well, you've got to look elsewhere. There's so many players in you know, his sort of position um, that Madrid sticks out to me as a, a possible destination, but will they pay 60 million? Probably not. Um, I don't know where he'd go, to be honest. I genuinely don't know who would take him. I can see, obviously, maybe a few lesser clubs like a Barcelona would be interested. Can they afford his wages? Probably not. They're going after Lewandowski. I don't think he'd go there. Like, I, I genuinely don't see a club at the level where he wants to play at that he believes is his level wanting to sign him or having, you know, the facilities to be able to sign him. So, again, it's it's one of those situations where, yes, we might value him at that. Yes, he might want to leave. But realistically, there just might not be that much interest. So that might be why he's deciding to run his contract down. So there's a bit more interest, so it's only contract negotiations. But then again, we're going to have to sell if he does that. So to me, £60 million is fair. It's it's fair given the circumstances. I think he's worth more, but again, our hands are tied. His contract's running out. But I mean, look, it, at the end of the day, I, I'm desperate for him to stay. I really want him to stay, but like, it's it's his decision at the end of the day. Obviously, he's away with England now, so the talks are on hold. He's not talking about any of this. He's concentrating on England, and 
the best thing for him, for me, in my opinion, is for him to genuinely stay put because I think he can rediscover his form and there isn't a club at this level that I think that is going to take him. Something you have to bear in mind with Sterling is, and that six to million valuation, is that he's not just an average player. Like I know City are currently linked with, or Nathan Ake is linked with the move away, and apparently City have put a price tag of fifty or sixty million on him and that kind of thing. Sterling is, he's not just a sixty million pound footballer, or what you believe to be more, and others will will also believe to be more. So Raheem Sterling is a global brand. Like he, he himself is a global brand, a global face, a global figure that transcends football. He, he's, he's a figure. He's a public figure with influence on the world. So you have to take in all that kind of thing. And I think in these talks that City are probably having with Sterling or will have when he gets back from his England duties, they have to be cutthroat. I don't think City... Uh, as a club who are aspiring to be one of the biggest powerhouses in world football. Whether you as rival fans agree with that or not is up to you, but it clearly the club want to be one of the big powerhouses in world football. You can't allow yourself to get played. Uh, you can't by, by players saying, no, nah, I might run down my contract. And listen, I'm not suggesting that's what Sterling's mindset is. I'm just basing that thought process off what I've read on on, on, on Twitter and, and the reports that we're getting off Simon Mullock. City have to be cutthroat. They have to say, listen, if you want to stay... We can stay, we or you can stay. We can open up contract talks and we can, you know, discuss figures and that. But if you actually are thinking about leaving or you're half arsed about staying and you're not fully committed, we can arrange for you to go. And City have to be cutthroat essentially. They have to be ruthless about it because I don't think it is a good look when you see players playing with the club. Like you have Paul Pogba over at Man United. He's been playing with his contract for years and talking about moving away. And Mbappe, the way he played Real Madrid and PSG. You need to avoid those situations. You cannot get embarrassed by any players. The club is always bigger than the player. The club, the badge, this is far more important than any player. Now, that's not to say I don't like Sterling. I love Raheem Sterling as a footballer, and I hope this isn't the way it goes. I hope it's plain sailing, two or three-year extension, Bob's your uncle, Mary's your aunt, job done. Listen, get down involved down below in the comments and let us know your thoughts on all this. It's obviously a controversial one. Many people will have different opinions and different takes on this, so we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Please leave a like on the video as well if you would. It massively, massively helps other City fans find the channel and helps our channel grow. And subscribe, of course, if you're new yourself. We're building a lovely little community here. So get involved. And we'll see you on Friday with yet another video. Good night and God bless.